welcome to Echo Church. We are so excited to worship with you today. Echo is a great place that you can call home. And if you're joining us for the first time, we hope that you feel part of the family. If you're new to us, we would love to get to know you. So we've made it really easy to let us know that you're visiting us today. And we've got a gift to say thanks for joining us. Simply text the word ECHO to this number, 94253. Click on the link that we'll send you, and there you can share a little about yourself. And if you'd like, you can share a prayer request as well. Again, text ECHO to 94253. Then if you're joining us in person, stop by our guest services kiosk after the service because we have a great t-shirt waiting for you. Also, now is a really great time to connect at Echo and we can help. We've created a one night course designed to help you learn more about Echo, to take your first steps to grow in your faith and to become part of the Echo family. We call it Echo Steps and everyone is invited to sign up today. Simply text the word ECHO to 94253. Then click the button letting us know that you're interested in attending. We'll help you register for the next class. Do not wait. Now is the time to connect. Text ECHO to 94253 and sign up today. Finally, we believe that God has a special encouragement that He wants to share with all of us. So as we continue in the service, let's prepare our hearts to hear encouragement from God's word. We keep playing with fire Well, once again, good morning and welcome to Echo. And a couple quick things I wanted to uh, share with you. One is you heard Ashley just say it, but I wanted to personally invite you to Echo Steps. Uh, we will be having an Echo Steps class this Wednesday evening uh, on Zoom. And so I want to encourage you uh, to, to join in with us. If you've been uh, coming for the past couple of weeks or months, uh, Echo is the or Echo Steps is the perfect opportunity to uh, get connected, to learn about Echo. You can become a member here at Echo. Perhaps you're interested in serving on the Dream Team. I'd encourage you to come join us for uh, Echo Steps wherever you are. Uh, however close you are, you're, you're uh, invited to join us. It's super easy. Again, just text Echo to 94253. Click on the button and we'll send you all of the Zoom information so that you can join in. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to gathering up with that class on Wednesday evening. The other thing I want to share with you today is after the service, uh, we are going to have uh, some folks down here available to pray with you, okay? So I just want to encourage you, if you would like someone to pray with you uh, about anything, uh, about, it could be anything at, at all, it could be about the message or it has nothing to do with the message, you just would like somebody to pray with you, uh, we will have some folks down here uh, waiting, I'll be down here as well. And uh, listen, there's no stigma to that. Uh, that's not something we've done in the past all that much, but we want to start doing it in the future. And especially with a series like this, we said this is the perfect time uh, to kick that off, okay? So I would suggest or su suspect that for most of us on most Sundays, uh, we could use somebody to pray with us. So if there's somebody down here offering, I want to encourage you to just uh, to take, them, take them up with their word and take advantage of that, okay? I'm going to hop into deep clean part one. In fact, let me start the message here today. In 1861, Charles Dickens uh, published a novel called Great Expectations. Great Expectations. I wonder if perhaps many of us would have labeled the year ahead Great Expectations back in January of 2020. <laughs> Little did we know all that would come after. There were a lot of expectations on the new year, the year 2020, the decade ahead. And of course, we've been thrown a bit of a curveball. In my experience, the greater the expectation, the greater the sting whenever disappointment comes. In Dickens' novel, one of the characters is Miss Havisham. Her wedding, which she hoped would be her best day, actually turned into her worst day. At 8.40 a.m., she receives a letter that would leave her heartbroken for the rest of her life. While putting on her wedding dress, she reads the letter and learns that her fiancé is not showing up to the wedding. In fact, Miss Havisham would wear that wedding dress every day until she died. In the famous words of the best band ever, she got stuck in a moment and she couldn't get out of it. 
That's you too, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Anybody else best band ever? You with me? Wow. I'm not hurt. I'm a little hurt. I'm a little hurt. To symbolize this fact that Ms. Havisham was stuck in a moment uh, in the book, to symbolize this, that all the clocks in her house were set to 8.40 a.m. forever until the day that she passed away. I think we often would wish that Charles Dickens just sort of had this wild imagination when he thought up this character of Miss Havisham. But the reality is all of us know someone who has been stuck in a moment as something that took place in their past. They become a prisoner of that moment in their life. They become stuck emotionally, spiritually, or even relationally. The past 15 months have been tough, right? That's the understatement, perhaps, of the decade. They've been tough, and there's been so many distinct moments and phases along the way. Uh, perhaps you can remember back to March of 2020 and uh, all of the fear and confusion and frustration, perhaps just the shock of what was happening. Maybe some of you stayed stuck in that moment. This week marked the anniversary, the first anniversary since George Floyd was killed and sparked so much hurt and anger and frustration around our country. As we headed into the fall and winter months, the pandemic continued to rage. There was all kinds of political fury, and it just created greater isolation, division, blame, uh, even horror. Uh, over the past 15 months, there have been lost loved ones, lost opportunities, even some lost moments. Often at times, it seemed like heartbreak has just seemed to compound on top of the other. It's been a tough year. And maybe you've stayed stuck in one of these moments. Perhaps one of those phases that I just shared for you uh, has kind of been 8.40 a.m. You've kind of still been stuck in that place. Or perhaps there was a moment that happened long before COVID. There was a hurt. There was a traumatic situation. There was something that happened to you, and it left you stuck there. And then the pandemic only magnified the pain, the disappointment, and the hurt that you have so long held on to. You had great expectations, but those great expectations have been intensified by the disappointment. Today, I want to lean into that topic for us, disappointment. Uh, with that sort of glowing and rosy introduction, <laughs> let me say welcome to Deep Clean. Today, we're going to embark on a new series, and I'm inviting us to let go of the things that have been holding on to us for far too long. We're going to touch on topics and opportunities to see, to recognize things that are latching onto our soul that have no business being there and allow Jesus to come in and do some deep cleaning. I, with my whole heart, have great expectations for what God wants to do in our church this summer and especially as we head into the fall season. doesn't mean there won't be some roadblocks or some detours or some bumps or some flexibilities that we're going to have to hang on to along the way, but I do think it's going to be an amazing journey. But we can't get there, I would suggest, unless we start here today with deep cleaning, allowing God to, to take hold of and to get rid of some things that are in our lives. We need God to do some healing. We need to recover some hope. We need to regain some vision in our lives. I think a lot of people have stayed stuck in what I like to call triage mode. In triage mode, right, you're, you're assessing the situation. There's people running around trying to see how bad is the damage, how bad is the wound, where does this patient need to go Next, and I think a lot of people have stayed in that place of blood pressure is up and the adrenaline is pumping and they haven't been able to move out of triage mode. They're addressing those immediate concerns, but so often we need to give ourselves space to, to build towards what God wants next. Instead of staying stuck in what happened, asking God what can happen in my life in the days ahead. Regardless of the disappointment, regardless of the hurt, regardless of the hang-up that's held you in the past. I was thinking about this this week, and I kind of had to laugh. I was reminded of uh, the day that our son Aiden was born. At the time, we lived in Durham, North Carolina, and uh, Katie woke up incredibly early, and she kind of had that look in her eye like, 
I think this is it. <laughs> so like, get, get ready. I hope you slept well last night because there, we're in for an adventure. And sure enough, she was ready. And we hopped in the car and raced across town still very early. And uh, because it was early and we had to go through downtown Durham on our way, I safely, I'm, I'm going to use that adjective first, I safely ran every red light in downtown Durham on our way. I think Katie was in enough pain, she didn't even care. She was like, you just, you just get me there as fast as possible. We get up to uh, Durham Regional, we're in the maternity area, and it must have been a full moon because every single labor and delivery room was completely full. <laughs> there was nowhere to put Katie. And um, there's, no, there's no, no room in the inn sort of analogies to that today. That's, that's a different, that's a, I'll save that for Christmas, you know what I'm saying? But there was no room, there was no place to go, and so they actually put us in a triage room. Right in the triage room, that's where they take the, the pregnant women that are coming in and assess how far along are they, where do they need to go next. But as we're in there getting assessed, they actually started like building the room around us. <laughs> they started bringing in all of the equipment. I'm not, I'm not playing. They started taping things to the walls. <laughs> I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, we're turning this into a labor and delivery room. <laughs> I'm like, this is, are you sure? And they're like, yes, this, this, is, this is where it's all going to happen. And I, I kind of had to laugh about that. We never made it to labor and delivery. We never went to that, that room. Now, we did eventually make it to one of the postpartum rooms. And uh, if you ever make it up to Durham Regional and you're, you're stuck in one of the postpartum rooms, they're literally the smallest postpartum rooms in America. I don't know. It was like room for me, Katie, Aiden, and like a doctor to sort of like squeeze in. It was not, not much room. But what, what if... What if we sort of just stayed in the triage room? I'm just talking about like in life. Like there was like this moment of expectation and then we just kind of stayed stuck in that room, right? It's not what you go to the, to the hospital for whenever you're pregnant. There's, there's hope and expectation of what's going to come, come next. Perhaps we went to the labor and delivery room, but there's people running around us all just trying to assess the situation. And I, I suspect Katie would be like, I can assess the situation for you. I'm having a baby. Like we could get this thing out. Or let's say we make it to the postpartum room and everybody's just running around crazy as though we're stuck in labor and delivery. They're checking Katie's vital signs every five minutes. She'd be like, get out. I am tired and I want to sleep. Postpartum is a place where you rest. It's where you step into the next phase of the expectations for the child. There's nutrition and there's hopes and dreams of all that is ahead. I think for a lot of people, whenever a traumatic situation, a traumatic season happens, they stay stuck in that place and they cannot get out of it. And today I want to give us that opportunity to say, yes, there was a disappointment in my past, but I'm going to leave that disappointment with God and I'm going to move on to hope and to healing. I'm going to move on to great expectations. I think that's what God has for every single one of us. You cannot stay stuck in the trauma of your past. You've got to address the pain. You've got to come to grips with some tough realities so that you can begin to move past what happened and see all that can happen ahead. I think when there's great expectations, it can lead to even greater disappointment. But I, don't, I, don't, I want to challenge you today to not, to not let that hold you back. In fact, today I want to challenge you to begin to get your hopes up again. Begin to believe that God has great things that he wants to do in your future. To hope, I think, is to be a follower of Jesus. We, we follow a God of hope. Yes, he went to the cross, but he also rose up from the tomb and he said, I'm coming back again. The, to hope is to follow after Jesus. It's medicine for the soul. It points us to our God that brings beauty out of ashes, that takes salvation out of a cross, that can put joy somehow into our mourning. Today, I want to invite us to move through the pain into a place of hope. To do that, I want to start with the Old Testament book of Hosea. Perhaps it's been a minute since you dusted off of Hosea. We'll, we'll head back there. Uh, in it, Israel is in an incredibly dark place because they've moved away from God. And even though Israel has been unfaithful, God still pursues them. Now, that's good news for somebody in here today. I would suggest it's good news for all of us because we serve a God who's a God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances and even thousands of chances. Like our God never leaves us. Perhaps you turned your back on God, but what you'll find is if you turn back to him, he's there waiting with open arms. And that's what we find with Israel here in the prophecy of Hosea. It says this, therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness. He's talking about Israel. And speak tenderly to her, and there I will give her her vineyards and make the valley of Achor a door of hope. I want to sit on that for a moment today. The valley of Achor, a door of hope. 
In Hebrew, achor uh, literally means trouble. I wonder what trouble you've faced here in the last 12 to 15 months. Have there been moments of loss? Have there been moments of disappointment? Fear, frustration, anger that's just latched on to you. Maybe you felt isolated from the people around you. And I want you to hear today that God wants to make your valley of acor, your valley of trouble, your door of hope. So often we want to go to a different valley. (laughs) God, take me to a different place and bring me into a hope-filled pasture there. But God says, I want to make your valley of acor, your valley of trouble, the actual, the very place where I will bring your hope. Your greatest disappointment can suddenly become your greatest victory. Right where that greatest hurt is, right where that greatest challenge is, God says, right there, I want to build a door of hope. In fact, I love how the message says it. And now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start all over again. I'm taking her back out to the wilderness where we had our first date, and I'll court her. I'll give her bouquets of roses, and I love this. I'll turn Heartbreak Valley into Acres of Hope. God says, I'm going to turn Heartbreak Valley into Acres of Hope. We're not going to go set up shop somewhere else right there in your place of greatest trouble, your place of greatest disappointment. There's where I want to put hope into your life. To make our way to the Acres of Hope, I think we've first got to recognize what led us into Heartbreak Valley. I think so often what leads us to Heartbreak Valley is we aren't processing our pain with spiritual eyes. Perhaps we've ignored it. The pain was there, but we just kind of put it off on the back burner. Perhaps we believe lies about the pain, or maybe we've even found ways to self-medicate. And today I want to give us an opportunity to give that disappointment and that pain to God. In fact, I just have one big point, and there's some things I want to share with us today. Here's the big point. When we fail to engage our pain in healthy ways, it piles up and leads to a heavy heart. When we fail to engage our pain in healthy ways, it piles up. And it leads to a heavy heart. Maybe some of you are walking in with a heavy heart today. Here's what I want to do. I want to first address the lies that I think so often we believe about our pain and disappointment. And I want to give us two steps to lead us into these acres of hope. Echo Church, if you're ready, say I'm ready. ready. That was pretty good. I was going to have you say it again, but I don't think I don't think you need it. You want to say it again just for fun? Uh, I'm ready. ready. Come on. I think I think we're, we're ready for this. Let's talk about some lies that we believe about our pain. The first one is this. We wrongly assume that pain is personal to us. We wrongly assume that pain is personal to us, meaning nobody else feels this pain as severely as I. Nobody else has ever gone through this. Nobody else has ever been in this situation. Uh, Only I have ever felt this pain. I'm the only one that's ever felt it this deeply. And I want you to know that's a lie from the enemy to make you feel shameful, to make you feel isolated from the people around you, uh, perhaps even to make you feel like you're a victim, like that nobody else has ever had this, this badly, only you. And this is what Jesus says to this lie. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain, what? On the just and the unjust. Sometimes it rains. (laughs) Sometimes it's Monday. (laughs) We all have, right? Rainy days. And Mondays, I think there's a song about that. There it is. We all we all have rainy days on Mondays. All all of us. Your pain. Somebody needs to hear this today. Your pain is not personal to you only. Others experience your pain. Others experience pain in their own lives. We all have pain. Pain is is pain. And we all, every one of us, experiences it. I like to say it like this. Stop thinking you're so special. <laughs> you are special, just not when it comes to, when it, not when it comes to pain. Because all of us, in different times in our lives, will go through painful seasons. Here's another lie that we often believe. We wrongly assume that pain is a punishment. We wrongly assume that pain is a punishment. Uh, some people assume that as soon as something bad happens, it's because of that wrong thought, that wrong action, that wrong word that they said to somebody back in fifth grade, and they knew God was going to track him down. <laughs> he finally caught up to me. Here's how Jesus attacks that lie. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. 
Jesus says you will have trouble, right? Just because you're going through something doesn't mean that God is punishing you, right? On this side of eternity, we live in a fallen and broken world. Things happen. We face challenges along the way. Now listen, don't live in fear, but expect some problems. Don't be surprised when challenges come. Don't assume it's because God is trying to get back at you for that lousy tip you left the other day at lunch. <laughs> tip better the next time. No, but that's not what it is, right? We all, we, all have bad, we all have bad days. The Greek word that Jesus uses here for trouble, it's kind of a tough word to say, it's thalipsis. You don't have to say that. You'll probably spit on your neighbor if you try it. Thalipsis, and it, it means pressure. The Greek word that Jesus used there it means pressure. Right? That's a that heavy heart that we experience. He says, in this world, you're going to have some pressure. You're going to have some trouble. You're going to have some days that you would rather just, I wish I would have stayed back in bed. But you can't allow them to pile up. Because what happens when they pile up, you get the heavy heart. You start feeling overwhelmed. You start starting to believe the lies that I'm the only one that feels like this. And Jesus says, you're going to have trouble, but I've already overcome. So if you'll choose to live each day and each moment in me, I will trade you your troubles, your pressure for my peace. You can walk in my peace and I'll lead you to the acres of hope. Here's another lie that we often believe. We wrongly assume that we have no responsibility. <laughs> so while some might say, well, I'm going through this because it's my fault, God's catching up to me, others will wrongly assume I have no responsibility to bear in this. And Paul combats this lie. He says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Somebody might be like, why do I keep getting all this corn in my harvest? Because you're planting corn. <laughs> Right? A man reaps what he sows. So often what we're getting in life is what we've been sowing. So if we don't like what we've been sowing, we need to change it. Right? If we don't like the harvest, we've got to change what we're planting. In fact, Paul goes on, whoever sows to please their flesh, doing things immediately right for now, from the flesh will reap destruction. But whoever sows to please the Spirit, doing things that please God, from the Spirit will reap what? Eternal life. Don't be deceived. God, God can't be mocked. A person is going to reap what they sow. Right? Why, why, am I, why am I getting this crop? Because that's the crop that you planted. <laughs> why do I keep going further in the debt? Because you keep sliding the credit card, right? Like we've got to change things if we want to get to where we want to go. Little by little, and I promise you, we are not perfect with this. I promise you. But little by little, Katie and I are just becoming ever so mindful, right? The, the days are fleeting. They're going fast. And our kids are growing up. And, and the things that we invest our lives in now are going to bring about the harvest in their lives later. And so we've just, moment by moment, day by day, we'll have times where we just got to have a come to Jesus meeting with each other and say, what, what is it that we're, that we're focusing on the most? Where are we going to invest our time, our talent, and our treasure? Because the harvest we want to see in their lives later, we must be spending the time planting today. Where, where's my time and my talent and my treasure going? If I want to see that harvest tomorrow, I've got to do the hard work of discipline in my life today. There are times, listen, there are times when I'm in a pickle and I've got to say, I'm in this pickle because of my actions, right? It's my own dumb fault. I did this. We've got to recognize it. We've got to own our mess. I love how the psychologist Carl Rogers says it. The only person who cannot be helped is the person who blames others. Man, I need to hear that probably at least once a day. The only person who cannot be helped is the person who blames others. It's not my fault. I'm not in this mess because of me. You might be. You might be. And you know a God who's a redeemer. <laughs> and if you'll face it, if you'll own your mess, then God can start leading you into a different place. You can start making a plan for a different path in the road ahead. I'm going to take responsibility for my actions and recognize that I'm responsible for what's going to come ahead. I'm going to plant the seeds today for what I want to see tomorrow. Here's another lie that we often believe. We wrongly assume that our pain is without purpose. We wrongly assume that our pain is without purpose. We'll be going through something, and the harder the pain we're walking through, the greater the disappointment, the harder it becomes for us to see God ever making anything good out of it, right? And so we'll wrongly assume there's no purpose in this pain. Our soul is tired and weary. We might feel betrayed, might be sad, might be angry or frustrated. But here's what I know. Whatever disappointment, whatever pain you're walking through, recognize this today. God never wastes a hurt. Never. 
God, God never wastes the hurt. Whatever you've walked through, he is the great redeemer. And he wants to what? He wants to build a door of hope in your valley of trouble. In your valley of heartbreak, he wants to bring about acres of hope right there. No pain is ever wasted. Paul says it like this, God comforts us in all our troubles. He uses the exact same word that Jesus uses, that Greek word thalipsis. Right? God comforts us in all of our pressures. So what? So that we can comfort those in any trouble, any pressure with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, right? We're going to have some rainy days and Mondays. So also our comfort abounds through Christ. I want to challenge you today. If you're like, I'm, I'm experiencing all that disappointment with Christ, but I don't know if I'm experiencing the abundance. We're going to get to it here in a minute, but let me just quickly say, you need to spend some time with God. You need to allow him to come in and bring his hope and his encouragement. What does Paul say? If we are distressed, he uses the same root word there. If we are distressed, if we're pressured, why? It's for your comfort and salvation. Paul had this amazing way of seeing beyond his troubles today. If anybody could have complained or whined and said, it's not my fault, I'm doing the things of God. Why is this stuff coming in? It was Paul, but yet he said, no, 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 I'm in prison. And you know what? It's actually turned out to advance the gospel even more. Paul could see beyond the moment. He could see beyond those challenges that he was walking in today. Paul would even say, in all things, in all things, God works the, for the good of those who love him. Now, the, the assumption there is that it's not all good. <laughs> God doesn't have any work to do if it's not all good. No, no. He's going to take some of those troubles. He's going to take some of those pressures. He's going to work it for your good and for his glory. James would say, consider it pure joy. <laughs> Come on, that's, that's a bit of a punch in the gut sometimes, isn't it? You're walking through disappointment and hardship. And James says, consider it pure joy. Why? Because God never wastes the hurt. So if you take that hurt and you turn it over to God, God can produce something in you that you currently don't have today. Sometimes the only way you can get to the glory that God wants to take you to is to go through the pain you're walking in right now. James says, consider it pure joy. That's the door of hope. That's where God's going to set up shop to bring about the, the acres of hope in your life. Pain can have great purpose if you look at it with spiritual eyes along the way. Here's the, the final the final disappointment, the final lie that we often believe is simply this. We wrongly assume that pain has no end. We wrongly assume that pain has no end. I'm going to feel like this forever. It's never going to get better. The pain I currently experience is going to be my life. Anybody a bad patient in here? You know what I'm talking about? Like when you're sick, like, like everybody needs to know about it. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, somebody. We were in the dream team service. I'm not going to say names, but like we, there was a wife that just looked right at her husband. I just started laughing in the middle of it. I'm trying not to look at anybody now and lose my, lose my train of thought. But I'm a bad patient. Like when I'm going through it, like I'm like, this is it, Lord. Like this is the moment. Like this is the one. And it's like, it's just a flu, right? It's just a cold. I'm like, oh, Lord, <laughs> please let this come past for me. Like I, God, I don't have what it takes. And then 24 hours later, what will happen? I'll be 100% better. <laughs> like I'll be perfectly fine. But I'm a, I'm, a bad, I'm a bad patient. God, I, this is how it's always going to be, isn't it? I'm always going to be in this sickness. I'm always going to be in this pain. And so often that's how we live our lives, fully forgetting who our God is. That he didn't stay on the cross. He didn't stay in the tomb. What did he do? He rose up from the dead. Here's what it says in Revelation 21. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. I don't know what pain or disappointment you're facing today. But if you think that you're going to live in that disappointment forever, will you hear that's a lie? Because our God's a God of hope. The former things are passing away and he's making all things new. He's going to wipe away every tear. He's going to wipe away every sorrow, every sadness. He's actively doing it now. He's bringing about the kingdom here in our midst. He wants to wipe away your tears today. He wants to turn your valley of heartbreak into acres of hope. He stands ready today at your side to say, I want to encourage you. I want to put wind in your sails. 
this disappointment is not gonna have the final word. We find ourselves in heartbreak valley so often because we aren't engaging the pain in healthy ways. Our hearts get heavy when we allow it to to pile up in our lives. And so often what's piling up are the lies. They're just compounding. We believe we're the only one that's going through it. This must be a punishment from God. Or I have nothing to do with this. I don't know why it came into my life. Or we recognize or we're looking around in the life. The lie we believe is that this has no purpose. God can't ever do anything good with this. Or we believe the lie that it's never going to end. And I'm telling you, our God is making all things new. Let me close with this. Two steps, two steps to deep cleaning the soul that's overwhelmed with disappointment. The first one is this, plant seeds today for the harvest I want tomorrow. I need to plant seeds today for the harvest that I want tomorrow. When you look ahead, months, years into the future, what is it that you wanna see in your life? How closely do you wanna be walking with God? How closely do you want your friends and your family around you to be walking with God? What kind of life do you want to be living? What kind of purpose do you want to be leaning into? What seeds will you plant today to get there? I love how the psalmist says it in Psalm 90. Teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them as we should. You're given days as a gift to spend. How are you spending them? What seeds are you planting? I want to encourage you to plant seeds today. Put put in some discipline today that's going to bring about the harvest you want to see tomorrow. I'm going to be encouraging us all summer long. This is a bit of a a precursor to that, but let me share for just a moment to really be leaning into our church family because I believe there's a harvest that God wants to bring about in us collectively. I I think think our fall is going to be great. I think God's got big things. People stepping in the waters of baptism, people finding hope and community, marriage is being restored. And so I want, I'm asking you today, what seeds do you want to plant in your own life? I want, to, I want to encourage you to plant seeds here in our church family. Like let's, let some roots grow down deep, connect. Go, go deeper with God. Serve on a team and discover the purpose that God has in you. Sometimes you just got to get in the game. You can watch it from the sidelines, but you get in the game and you're, you know, all of a sudden you'll be like, I, I think I'm seeing more of who, who I am and how God created me. Plant seeds today for the harvest you want tomorrow. Let me give you one more. Engage God's presence. Engage God's presence. I've been so encouraged over the past few weeks as the, Numbers have been dropping in the community and restrictions have been changing and some of you have been coming back in for the first time. I've just had so many people that have had a pretty similar conversation of, I missed this so much or I didn't realize how much I missed it. I had somebody tell me last week, they said, I was starting to believe the lie that being at home was the same. And there's just something about being in the family of God. Like you just can't get around it. I'm so glad we had the technology to kind of be that lifeline during the times that we could not be here in the building. But there's just something for being here together, being in the presence of God with the family of God. But here's also what I know. What we do here together matters, but you can actually take this presence into your daily life. You can wake up on Monday and experience the presence of God. You can be in that tough meeting on Wednesday with that person you're like, you're ready to, you're ready to sock them because they just said that thing that set you off. And in that moment, the presence of God can be there. And if you've been walking in the valley of disappointment, I want you to hear that when you engage God's presence, he's got more for you. Psalm 4610, perhaps somebody has heard this verse before, but I'm gonna give you a moment to experience it. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. In other words, Stop running around in triage mode with your your heart racing and the adrenaline pumping and you're trying to solve all the things in your own strength. Be still and know that he's God. And when you engage his presence, you make it possible for God to step into your trouble and to give you peace. He may change the situation around you or he may just give you peace in the midst of the situation. But when you're doing it on your own, you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. He says, be still 
and know that I am God. One more verse, we'll close up shop. The psalmist in Psalm 73 says this, when I tr tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply. I think we can resonate with that. When I tried to understand the pandemic, when I tried to understand the racial injustice, when I tried to understand all the political junk going on, when I tried to understand the loss I've been experiencing in my life, when I tried to understand the disappointment, and I tried to get some hope back, and I tried to get some vision back for my life, God, when I tried to understand it, it troubled me deeply. I think we all understand that portion of it. Let me help us understand the second part. Until I entered the sanctuary of God. The psalmist is saying, I was trying to figure it all out, my own strength, my own power, my own wisdom, and it troubled me beyond no end until I went into the presence of God. There's something that happens when we come here together, isn't there? God, God moves in such a way that you're like, I can't, I can't replicate this, I can't understand it, but God moves here. I, move, I went into the sanctuary of my God. And all of a sudden, those troubles that felt so big were standing next to my God, who's so much bigger. And so I want to give you the opportunity today, Echo Church, just to, to lay your troubles at the feet of God. The pressure, the disappointment. Perhaps the, the pain of the past 12 to 15 months have led you right into Heartbreak Valley. And I want you to know right there, your God wants to turn it into acres of hope. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for moments where we get to linger in your presence, to be with the family of God. Lord, we invite you today. Maybe you just pray something like this in your own heart. God, I invite you today to do a deep cleaning. Maybe you're here today and you would say, I've been experiencing some disappointment. I've been hanging on to it. I've been stuck in those moments in my past but they were my 8.40 a.m. and I couldn't move forward, but I recognize today that God's got acres of hope in the days ahead. And if that's you, would you just in your own heart say right now, God, I need you. God, I invite you into this place of disappointment, this place of pain, this place of trouble and pressure. And I invite you to make it acres of hope. Maybe you'd even say to God, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant the seeds in my life today for the harvest I wanna see tomorrow. I'm gonna lean into your word. I'm gonna lean into prayer. I'm gonna lean into my church family. I'm gonna plant the seeds today for the harvest I wanna see tomorrow. And it starts with engaging his presence. Would you say, God, the presence I'm experiencing in this place, God, would you take it with me tomorrow and the week ahead? And Lord, when disappointment tries to creep back up from the past or just new troubles that come, God, teach me to engage in your presence, to come into the sanctuary of my God. As we continue to pray, I want to pray for one more group of people this morning. In fact, I've already been praying for you today. Dream Team was already praying for you at 8.30 this morning. Maybe you're here today and You've heard me talking about who you get to be as a follower of Jesus, but you would say, I don't know if I am a follower of Jesus, but I want to be. And I want to give you a moment to turn to God. What does that look like? You simply recognize that you're, you're a sinner in need of a Savior. In fact, every one of us at some point has been a sinner in need of a Savior until we came to Jesus. Not, not a one of us has lived a perfectly clean life. Not one of us. It simply means that there, there are things in your past that displease God. And you say, today, I want to be forgiven of that. How do you do that? Well, you believe what Jesus did on the cross. That was your punishment, but he took it. You get to go free. When he rose up from the dead, that wasn't just a historical moment. That was your moment. When Jesus came back to life, that was an opportunity for you to come back to life. All you have to do today is simply say, Jesus, I believe, and I want to follow after you. On the count of three, I'm going to invite you to raise your hand and I want to pray for you. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. This is an opportunity for you to say, no, this is my deep cleaning day. This is my deep cleaning opportunity. I'm not going to wait 
I want to walk out of here today knowing that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm a follower of Jesus. If that's you today, I want to invite you to take the bold step. On the count of three, just raise up your hand. One, two, three. Just raise it up high. It's wonderful. Praise God. You can put your hands down. Anybody else? Say, today's my day. Love it. If that's you, would you just pray this prayer in your own heart? Something like this. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I need you. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and I believe that Jesus is my Savior. You say, Lord, I believe what you did on the cross. You were taking my punishment. You let me go free. I thank you, God. You say, Lord, when you rose up from the dead, you were rising up from the dead so that I can have new life as well. And today I reach out for that new life. I turn from my old life and I turn to you. I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. Would you say something like this? God, I can't do it on my own. I need your Holy Spirit. Would you fill me now? Father, we all look to you today. We invite you to do your deep cleaning work inside of us. God, I pray that this is just the first step of the process where you can come in and clean us out of disappointment and addiction and fear and anger. God, do your work in us so we can walk fully in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, here's what we love to do here at Echo. We celebrate when people are taking next steps with God because none of us take next steps alone. Why don't you make some noise and celebrate some people who are giving their lives over to God today. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining with us online today. If you pray with us just a moment ago, I want to challenge you to do something right now. Text the word ECHO to 94253. Click on the link that we'll send you and then take the bold step of letting us know the spiritual decision that you just made. Don't let what God is doing in your heart stay here. We can help you connect with others and grow in your faith. So right now, text ECHO to 94253 and let us know. In fact, for anyone that's wanting prayer or anyone that's interested in connecting at ECHO or taking a spiritual next step, text ECHO to 94253 and let us know how God is moving in your heart. If you have preschool and elementary children, I also want to encourage you to find our videos that we upload just for them. You can find them on our YouTube channel, Midtown is Preschool, Uptown is Elementary. Now, these videos are a lot of fun and they're a great way to spiritually encourage your family. More than anything, I want to invite you to bring your children to experience Echo Kids live each Sunday at Avon Middle School South. They have an absolute blast playing meaningful games, learning the Bible, uh, talking in small groups, and singing and dancing. Our Echo Kids team would love to welcome them very soon. Finally, if you'd like to get back to Echo through a tithe or offering, you can do so at echochurch.cc and simply click on the Give button. If you prefer, you can also do this in the echochurch.cc app and click on the Give button there as well. Uh, we want to thank you for your generosity and let you know that God is using your gift to echo His love into the hearts of so many people. All right, again, thanks for joining us online today. Next Sunday, I want to invite you to join us in person at Avon Middle School South. And, of course, we'll continue to have our messages online as well. Listen, we love you guys, and we will see you soon.